Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabber Tang. Uh, today I'm going to go over vector functions and space curves, as you could see from the graphs. Uh, the first graph is about uh, vector functions, curves in space, but uh, being represented by R of T as a vector function. And the right hand side shows a space curve. Uh, let's get into it. This is uh, going to be a short video. The one after this one is going to be a little bit longer, and I'm recording two today. This one and the one after. Here we go. Vector functions and space curves. Let's start with vector functions. The domain will be real numbers, T, and the range will be vectors, R of T. T represents time in most cases f of t, g of t, and h of t are the components functions of r of t. What does that mean? It means that r of t is a vector, as you could see, of three components, f of t, g t, and h of t. That's another way to write it down. Here's an example. If r of t equals the three components, as you could see right here, Instead of reading them, I just want to uh, save you some time and point to them. I took the time to highlight or do different colors. Uh, the component vectors are f of t, g of t, and h of t. Looking at the green part right here, this is the input for lin, 3 minus t. And we know that lin has to be greater than 0 as a domain. So 3 minus t has to be greater than 0. Now looking at the square root right here, t is in blue, and we're looking at blue. Uh, t has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, combining these two together, that tells me that the domain of the space curve has to be greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal, uh, sorry, less than 3. Because if you uh, subtract 3, subtract 3 here, and you divide by negative 1, you end up with t less than positive 3. All right. Uh, things about limits right here. If you want to apply the limit to a vector function right here, you apply to the components and you'll be fine. As an example, what's the limit of r of t as t approaches 0 for the given vector function? I have it different colors, that's f of t, that's g of t, and that's h of t. We'll take one by one. Let's take the first one. As t approaches 0, this is going to go away, so we have 1. The second component. If you write it as t over e to the power t, t goes to 0 right here. So the whole thing as a fraction will go to 0, so it's 0. The third component, which is a known function in trig, and limits the limit takes you to one we're done the limit of r of t as t approaches zero is one i plus zero j plus one k or in short i plus k now the second part of the lecture is space curves suppose that f and g and h are continuous real valued functions on an interval i then the set c of all points x y z in space where x is f of t and y is g of t and z is h of t and t varies throughout the interval i is called a space curve we have x equals f of t and y equals g of t and z equals h of t are called parametric equations of c and t is called the parameter. Here is a space curve in general. So if you want to trace this curve this way, every time you point to a point to mention it, you are pointing to it with a vector. This is the vector function that we are talking about. R of t is the vector as you could see. This point by itself is a point. So the difference between this and this, this is a point, this is a vector, pointing to that point. 
c is traced out by the tip of a moving position vector r of t so that's how we represent vectors in space or sorry uh, space curves using vectors sketch the curve whose vector equation is r of t equals cosine i plus sine uh, cosine t i plus sine t j plus t k notice that x is cosine t and y is sine t and z is t what's interesting right here is uh, this is in space three dimension if you ignore this for just a little bit imagine we don't have k in other words we are not in the z uh, axis only x and y axis in the xy plane so we end up with x square plus y square equals cosine square plus sine square which is a famous formula in math equals one but that represents x square plus y square equals one which is in algebra it's a circle with radius one centered at the origin so if you don't go up or down with the z-axis and you are staying on the xy plane you're actually going around as a circle and if t goes all the way keeps going you're gonna repeat yourself what's interesting now is as t gets involved let's say it goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 and so on you're gonna be having values for k they are positive values so you're gonna be lifted up from the xy plane and that is the graph the start point is 1 0 0 on the x-axis right there plug in 0 here so you're not up or down like in zero here sine zero is zero that's this zero right here and cosine zero is one that's this one here as you as t keeps increasing you're gonna go around but you're gonna also go up at the same time and this is called a helix it's kind of like you are tracing the surface of a cylinder the cylinder projection down is a circle with radius one centered at the origin okay that should do it for this section probably this is one of the lowest or the uh, least amount of time for uh, sections that I'm covering calculus 3 so let's save some time to go to the coming section which is a little bit lengthier I would do my best to make it between 30 and 40 minutes but we'll see how it's gonna go okay we'll see you in the next one thank you thank you for watching if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe and i'll see you next time thank you